Today's video is some of the negative experiences that I've had in my undergraduate course and let's just get started. I had lived in the UK for about one year and it was time to start university. I was very shy. In Saudi, English wasn't my first language, obviously I spoke Arabic, so I felt really nervous, I felt like people are judging me because my English isn't good or my grammar is not perfect. I was gonna go into university and I'm gonna speak nonsense, people are not gonna understand anything that I'm saying. And then add that with just general personality, awkwardness and shyness, and you basically have a recipe for disaster. So, in my first day of university, um, I arrived and there was this orientation. I sat next to two girls and at the end of the orientation, it turns out all three of us, we were doing architecture, we were the same course. For names, I'll call one Sarah and one Rachel. Hit it off with Rachel more. Uh, we liked the same things, we kind of had the same sense of humor. I was starting to feel a bit, okay, this isn't so bad. Sarah, she was also nice, but she just kept ditching us. And you know when you speak to someone and their mind is completely somewhere else? Within kind of the first week of university, I'm starting to get that really negative vibe from Sarah. She was being completely passive aggressive. One time we had this lecture and it was completely my mistake. I forgot to bring my glasses. I was sat at the back. I couldn't see anything and obviously I couldn't hear anything. So I was really at the back. I think I dozed off for a second there. We left the lecture and we were walking me, Rachel and Sarah. And Sarah was like, oh, Rachel, what is the assignment? I'm like assignment? <laughs> what assignment? She's like, oh, we have an assignment. What? And she's like, we have an exam as well. What? And Rachel's like, oh yeah, we have an exam and we have uh, an assignment. Just do this. You have to do that. And Sarah's like, well, if you don't want to tell me, just don't tell me, Russia. Don't lie about it. I'm not lying. And then she just walked off. And I'm like, okay. I just ignore it. She might have been joking. I'll just ignore it. And then there was this other time. The first day of lectures, we went into a different classroom and I sat next to Rachel next to the door. The next day, Sarah sat there next to Rachel next to the door. Obviously, I didn't say anything because it's a classroom. There's multiple chairs and tables. Go sit whatever you want. Like, I don't care. The third day, she didn't come to class. I sat next to Rachel. The first day, I sat there. And I was having my lunch. She literally came in the lunch break, missed the entire first lecture. Get up, get off my effing chair. I'm having my lunch. And she's like, I don't care. Pick up your lunch. Go eat somewhere else. This is my chair. You, 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 you threw my sandwich away. My sandwich. My sandwich. And she just stood over me until I got up. Whenever we'd hang out for lunch, me, Rachel and Sarah, we would literally all be having our lunch and then start smoking next to us. I have asthma. Like, I was like, oh, I'm sorry, but can you not smoke next to me? I'm, I have asthma. And she would be like, well, I wanted to hang out with my boyfriend anyway, so see ya. In that first week as well, we also had an assignment to sketch an unsustainable house. I presented in front of second year and third year. And even the third year students were looking at me like, they looked at the teacher, hello, look at her work, why is she in the first year? She should be in the third year. The teacher was like, yeah, I know she's really good, but we can't do anything because what she studied in Saudi wasn't RIBA accredited, so we can't transfer her. From that first week, I started getting a lot of recognition and attention. Like I started making a lot of friends, people would come to me ask, asking me for help and presentations and I would be more than happy to help. It started to make me feel a little bit more comfortable like okay this education in the UK might not be so bad. I might not be talking complete nonsense. I think I'm gonna be okay. I was wrong. There was one day Rachel drives, uh, Sarah takes the train and I take the bus. Now the bus station and the train station are next to each other. So Rachel she said okay guys I'll see you later. I'm gonna go drive. So she went off and Sarah was like, okay, hey, Rasha, I'll walk with you to the bus station. And I'm like, hooray, <laughs> I'm so happy. So she turns to me and she says, Rasha, why don't you like me? What do you mean? It's just like, I've been kind of getting the sense that you've been avoiding me and don't lie. I know you have. And I'm like, okay. And the truth is, I have been avoiding you. I've been getting this passive aggressiveness from your side. I don't know why. Um, for example, you did this one day and it really hurt my feelings. And she was getting really angry. She was like, uh-huh, tell me more. And by the time we got to the bus station, she just went 
ballistic, telling me how everything is my fault. How is it fair that you studied two years before you came here? This is not fair. There was this one time I was looking at you, you were sketching so freely. I have to think about every single line I draw and every single uh, sketch. And if it doesn't come out right, I have to rip out the entire page. You know, right, that no one actually likes you and how everybody's actually using you. For reference, Rachel is Christian and... Um, she's a tattoo artist, but honestly, I don't care. Like, she can do whatever she wants with her life. She was a nice person to me. And she's like, how are you friends with Rachel? She's a tattoo artist. Have you seen the tattoos on her body? She's Christian. You're Muslim. How are you two friends? And I am Arabic, and this is the first time I knew that she was Arabic. She never mentioned it to me. She never said anything. Why are you friends with Rachel? Don't trust her. She's a bad person. She's only using you. She's not really your friend. Have you never seen her, the way that she talks to you? No, Rachel, she's actually a really nice person. We have so much in common. She's like, oh no, you guys both hate me. You don't care about me. You left me on the third week. I'm like, no, that's not true at all. We're always asking, like, why are you not attending lectures? Oh my God, you guys talk about me behind my back? I'm like, no, 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 that's not what I meant. We were just worried about you because you stopped attending lectures. Um, you're not really that talented anyway. You've only studied two years and that's why you have that experience. So don't get ahead of yourself. You're nothing. And I was just standing there in the middle of a bus station, completely crowded with people. And she was just yelling. And I genuinely did not know what to do. Look, Sarah, I'm so sorry for everything. Can we just put all of this behind us? I feel like we've got on, on such a wrong foot here. We just put everything behind us and just start new. Have you ever had a situation where someone is completely angry, like completely angry and then is like, okay, <laughs> like 180 degree change. She's like, okay, I'll wait for you until you get on your bus. And we just started talking and she was asking me where I live. She was like, um, I live all by myself. I cook, I clean, I do my own laundry, I do all my furniture, I am such an independent woman, um, I have my own boyfriend, you are so spoiled, ha 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 ha, you are so privileged. Keep an open mind, Trisha. Keep an open mind. I'm like, ha ha, no, no, it's not like that at all. Like, I live with my mom, yeah, but I'm very independent. I've, I've had to work for TK Maxx to pay the bill. And she was like, oh, but you have a boyfriend. When are you going to move out? You're still living with your mom. How pathetic. My mom is diabetic. She's literally above 60 years old. So I'm living with her to take care of her. No, my parents are so nice. They let me do whatever I want. I don't want to be racist, but your parents seem like such the Middle Eastern type and they just seem like really bad parents no 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 <laughs> no 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 so i looked at her and i'm like sorry sarah i don't think we can be friends anymore um i'm really sorry i wish you all of the best and she was like why I'm like well for starters it's been less than five minutes and you've insulted my mom my dad my culture me and then she goes off again oh my god Arsha, you are so arrogant you think you are better than me that's fine you don't want to be my friend that's fine i'm gonna be a ghost i'm gonna disappear <laughs> how tell me how are you gonna be a ghost i'm gonna disappear i'm not gonna attend any of the lectures her chair the one that we had an argument about she was sat behind me oh you're gonna turn around and you're never gonna see me you are so over <laughs> Fine by me! And she's like, okay, okay, I'm just gonna go. She grabs her bag, she walks off for like two minutes, she looks back. Are you not gonna follow me? No, my bus is here. So obviously I went home and I cried about it because one of my biggest insecurities that I'm gonna be there and no one's gonna like me. And then she just literally said it to my face. I literally knew her for one week, I swear. Maybe two and that's it. In the first two weeks, how do you know someone? Now, the second story that I want to talk about is what happened with me and Rachel. So now, at the end of first year, I've made some more friends. And they started to tell me the exact same thing. Rachel, why are you friends with Rachel? I'm getting this vi bad vibe from her. Like, whenever the three of us would be together, so it would be me, Rachel, and this new girl, um, Vivian, for example. So Vivian would try to talk to Rachel. Rachel, she would just give her like one word answers. Rachel 
would never speak to Vivian and I'm just there in the middle trying to make them both happy try to make a lot of plans to put us all together I said maybe they don't know each other yet once they get to know each other they could be more friends but the thing is every time I made plans Rachel she would just cancel last minute would sometimes talk over me in my presentation like I would literally be presenting my own project the lecturer would ask me a question like Rasha why did you do this or Rachel she would just jump in stand up next to me and be like oh yeah the dimensions are this and that this is my presentation like why are you answering my questions and she was never positive towards me anytime she spoke to me it was always in a negative way she never complimented me which I thought was just strange like Whenever she would do something new with her hair, I would just be like, oh my god, I love your hair, you look so nice today, stuff like that, yeah, whatever. And anytime she spoke about my appearance, it was always in a bad way. For example, oh Rish, I would love to see you one day in full face of makeup. I'm like, well, I wear makeup every day to, to school anyway. It's like, yeah, yeah, no, I know, but I mean like full eyeshadow, eyeliner red lips as much as i appreciate it i think it's beautiful on other people um it's just not my style it's not my personality she's like yeah but you have to let me do it i'm so good at makeup i should really do it for you sometimes you look like you need it well i do have a picture one time of my sister's wedding and i had a little bit of more makeup on i showed her the picture and she literally held me by the arm she's like oh my god there's i'm like oh yeah I look nice. No way, you look like a panda. Those eyes, like they're so smoky, they're so dark. It just doesn't suit you really. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be rude here. What? Oh, there was even this one time, oh my God. We were all sat in a table and the lecturer was asking us, oh, how many, how many seats do you think this specific theater has? I thought he was speaking about a theater that we've been to. And I'm like, oh, is it about 300 seats? And he's like, oh no, it's a thousand. He meant a different theater. And I'm like, oh, okay. She literally turned her whole body 180 degree, pointed her finger at me. Ha 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 ha. Oh my God, 300 to 1000. How could you get that so wrong? I should retitle this video to why. I ended up speaking to her about these things, how she was treating me, how I felt around her. And she was like, oh, Risha, this is just the way I am. Don't take it the wrong way. All my friends think I'm a B-I-T-C-H. Every one of my friends saying that I'm really rude. And that's just how much I care about someone. I am mean to them and I am rude to them. That's just how it is. I don't know. I've never had a friend that was giving me tough love before. You guys are going to have to let me know. Is that normal or not? But if you care about someone, why wouldn't you be nice to them? And I literally just stopped making plans with her because almost every plan we ever made, she would cancel. You know how long that lasted? That lasted the, the entire second semester of second year and half of the first semester of third year. We have literally not spoken to each other because I was literally just prioritizing other things and she never like reached out and said, oh, Risha, we haven't spoken in a while. Let's make some plans together. And that's when I knew that she would literally not talk to me unless I spoke to her first, you know. Now in third year, we started to talk a little bit more. By third year, it was only four of us, if you can imagine. Like the entire third year was only four students. It was me, uh, Rachel, and two men, let's call them... Um, Mahmoud and the fourth guy, let's call him. Why can't I not think of pen names? Why am I looking in my room? <laughs> okay, uh, David, let's call him David. Started to talk a little bit more, but it was nothing serious, it was nothing deep. We had a project, and at that time, I was struggling so so bad. Our submission is always Friday midnight digital, that's always. So on Thursday, I am just starting to draw my sections <laughs> the day before the submission so you can imagine how far behind i was so all of us we were working really late at the university and i was speaking to, to mahmoud and i was like you know what mahmoud i am so far behind i think i'm just gonna submit late um you know if you submit late you get a 10 percent penalty he said you know how they don't even grade until monday yes and i'm like okay and he said we have a different submission that was due on monday but it was digital, but usually it's on the desk. So he's like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put everything on Monday morning. Like I'm gonna come to uni really, really early in the morning before they even come to check anything. 
and I'm gonna put everything on my desk and just say, oh really, it's digital, I thought it was gonna be on my desk. Well, this is really risky, what happens if you get caught, like I don't know what's gonna happen, don't do it, it's really bad. He was very adamant, I was gonna do it. Okay, fine, I submitted two days late and it wasn't perfect, but at least I knew that I would get a decent grade, um, I could put it in my portfolio. About a week after, I got an email, not just me, the whole university got an email saying that there was something wrong with the system and nobody is getting the 10% penalty. I was speaking to Rachel, I told her what happened and I was really happy. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna get the 10% penalty, I'm like, I'm so happy. And Rachel, she was like, oh, okay. At that point, I didn't expect her to be happy. Anyway, I was speaking to Mahmoud. Guess what happened? This, this, this happened and I'm not gonna get the 10% penalty. And he just went completely angry. How is this fair? You know they're only doing this because of you, right? They don't want to give you the 10% penalty, right? They're playing favorites, they like you more. We should all get 10% in addition to our grade because of what happened. And then he said, look Russia, you don't even care if you get a 10% penalty, right? I was like, no. And he said, if I don't get a good grade on this assignment, I'm gonna get a 2-2, I need to get a 2-1. Can I speak to a lecturer and tell them that you submitted late and how this is not fair? I'm not gonna lie, it did annoy me because you don't need to tell them that I submitted late because you can just talk about the system. Why do you have to involve me? But then again, I said, well, I don't care about the 10% penalty. Even though it bothered me, I said, okay, we went to this lecturer that we kind of trusted and we spoke to him. And then this Mahmoud guy kept telling the lecturer how this is not fair. You guys are only doing this because of Russia, because she submitted late. Uh, the lecturer was like, no, this is not because of Russia. There was something wrong with the system. And he apologized, but it was something that happened to the entire university. He did not like what that lecturer said, even though he was the head of the department. He was literally the head of the architectural department. He spoke to different lecturers, they spoke to different lecturers, and in the end, we had some sort of a board meeting. We were sat in a very long table, all of the lecturers were sat on one side, and our class was sat on the other side, and I was sat in the middle, and Mahmoud was speaking to all four lecturers about how I'm arrogant, they are playing favorites, how this is not fair. Now, at this point, I did not know that Mahmoud was going to speak about this again. You know, I agreed to speak to this one lecturer about it, which was the head of the department. That should have been it, and we should have just put this behind us. The same guy that I helped him so much in his work. There was this one time when his laptop broke, I went there and helped him fix it. He literally had problems with site analysis, I helped him. And he would still say those things. And this is the same guy that submitted two days late and is still asking for more. That day, no one said goodbye to each other, everybody just went their separate ways. And I think it was Easter holiday, but we had about two weeks off of uni. I know the way that I'm saying it makes it feel like it was related, but really it's not. I was going through my phone and I literally had so many groups. I was just deleting the groups that literally weren't inactive. I deleted the group or I left the group that the four of us were in together. Now that group, we literally have not spoken to on for months. I know for a fact that everybody has private chats with everybody anyway. I honestly did not think it was a big deal at all. If it was, if it offended anyone, I'm sure I would get a message asking me like, Rasha, why did you leave the group? I didn't get anything, so I said, well, they didn't send me anything, so it just means that they're okay with it, like it's not a big deal. Now, before any of this happened, before Easter holiday, before anything, we all had a group assignment and we all had different segments that we had to do. I was in charge of segment two. I did my part, which was section two, and I did it about a week before the deadline. We are in a university, we're not in high school. We can put our differences aside and just work on a group project together. Every time I went there, it would always be some kind of excuse like, um, yeah, we haven't started yet. Oh yeah, we're not doing anything. And you know when you go somewhere and you speak to someone and then everybody just disappears? Like, I'm not stupid. <laughs> I was like, fine. Maybe they were just still angry about what happened. I'm just gonna give them some space. At the end of the day, I finish my part. They don't want my help. I'll just wait for them until they finish. We put it together, we submit, all good. You know, and I've seen them the day before the presentation working on it. I thought maybe they're just doing it right now and once they're done, they're gonna send it to me. And then it was the day of the submission and they haven't sent it to me yet. And I was like, okay, from 
everything that I've seen so far, it looks like they are excluding me from this. Then I sent them an email to make sure that they would send me the chart and I sent them an email only because I wasn't sure they were gonna attend. I think it was about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock and they still didn't come to uni otherwise I would have gone and spoken to them myself. I said, hi all, can you send me the chart that you have been so kindly excluding me from so that I can add my part with regards Rasha Shururu. That's it. Now the email that they sent. So they said, hello. We would not have replied to this email simply because of a controversial statement you made in your email. But to save you the dilemma of checking your mailbox, we will reply back. First of all, we would like to highlight a point you've mentioned. Communication is vital for the success of this group work. Exactly a week ago, you left all of our WhatsApp group, a medium we all communicate and discuss the progress of the work. Complete lie because we have not used that WhatsApp group for, like I said, for months. In as much as we want to do well in this aspect as a group, you left us with no option than to proceed without you. You can't simply expect us to follow you regarding your actions. Please, we are all bigger than that. It's called self-respect. Just reflect on what you've done and the demeaning message you sent by exiting the group, which we are not even interested in mentioning here. What demeaning message that I sent by exiting the group? I don't understand. Just left the group. It was not even a formal group. It was literally just a group that we made in first year, which many people have left. If for any reason you are feeling superior to anyone and don't want to partake in any group work, well, we are good as a team as well. Mahmoud, Rachel, and David. But you sent in an email last minute on the day of submission asking us to send you over the chart which we've done collective view for you to add your bit is inappropriate. Remember, we had discussions and planned everything. The chart did not spring into existence by its own. And regarding your own part, we've made it upon ourselves to do it as a group and we've informed the lecturers about it. I agree. Group chart was discussed. It was planned. Everyone knew exactly the part that they had to do. So why are you now the day of the deadline? You're telling me that you've already did my part. And I'll tell you what happened afterwards, but, but they didn't do my part and they didn't speak to any lecturer about it, which I'll tell you why. The fact that you're saying that you've informed the lecturers about it, which means that it had moved on to a more serious problem for you to involve the lecturers. Why did you not tell me? Communication is vital for the success of the group work. Excuse me, how many times did I come to you and ask you, hey, how's the project going? How's the research? What are you guys doing? What are you guys, like, how's your part doing? And you've literally avoided me and then disappeared into, into the abyss. Then it said, however, we are a united team. You can still participate if you talk to everyone and talk like professionals and act accordingly. Very rich coming from a person <laughs> that sent me such a message. No matter the competitive nature that's between us, we will share a great respect for one another. As we are all matured and try to do well, we will try to act professional. We cannot keep up with a situation where someone won't even say hello to you but instead just send in an email last minute with thanks. You can imagine at that time I read that email and I was completely furious. I was so angry. Were you not there when we had discussions and everyone was doing their part? Like I've made my part for a week before the deadline and I've spoken to you multiple times. How's the project going? How's the research going? When can I add my part? Did you add that into the email whatsoever? Nothing. Ever since that incident, I have come to class so many times and I would say good morning and literally none of them would look up from their desk and say good morning. No one would reply to me. So anyway, I walk back to class really angry. One of the lecturers was there. I go up to him and I'm like, look at this email. Look at what I sent and look at what they sent. The look on my lecturer's face, like even the first sentence, you can see his face was like, Anyway, he calls the three over, what's going on with this group project? And Mahmoud was like, oh, lecture, um, Rasha, she left the group the other week ago after the board meeting. She was very upset. She left the group. She's not talking to anyone. She's being very arrogant. She would come to class and not say good morning. And we don't want to work with her. And then we started talking. And I told her, Mahmoud, like, I didn't agree for you to go and speak to more lecturers about it. And this whole board meeting, this whole table was so embarrassing. I've done the assignment since a week ago. It's already ready. And he started laughing. Like literally, he started laughing. And then I started crying, like being humiliated like that in front of the class. 
that he would just laugh at me. Of course, I got emotional and I was like, no, that's not true. How many times have I come to class and I said good morning and no one would reply to me, you know, and I have a dignity as well. Like, if you guys don't want me, I'm just gonna sit by myself. And now this other guy, David, he started laughing as well. So the lecturer was like, oh, Rasha, please don't cry. It's okay. Let's just get to the bottom of this. You guys are gonna have to let Rasha in. So now when we came to do the assignment, guess what? They said in the email that they've done my part. That was a lie. They didn't do my part. They didn't even finish their part. So after what happened, to be honest, we were kind of fake nice to each other for a few days and then everything had to be moved into online learning anyway so we never saw each other again i never spoke to them again now i just want to say that just because i am sharing these stories doesn't mean that i think i'm innocent and i didn't make any mistakes in the story i'm sure that i did and i think looking back my biggest mistake was communication. I should have sent that email a long time ago and made it more formal. And you know, I don't hate any of the people in this story whatsoever. I wish them all of the best, but... Or maybe I gave off the impression on some of my YouTube videos that I might be arrogant or that I think I'm superior. That I apologize so much and I am so sorry for that. Because I know what it feels like when somebody talks down on you and and I would never want to give that experience to anyone else but these are people that I knew for three years you know me you know that I am not like that don't ever leave any groups I hope you guys enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you like it also comment if you want part two because I've got some juicy stories I'm Rasha Shirodo and I'll see you next time bye Yeah.